Can you change the past? You can. Am I crazy? Not for knowing this. Today I'm going to teach you about a technique called revision. A technique for manifesting and for reclaiming your destiny. We don't have to accept the past. The past doesn't exist anymore. The past isn't real, it's just memories. And as we know, every time we recall a memory, we're actually reshaping it. And the possibilities afforded to us in the present and in our future are largely shaped by our perceptions of the past. But I'm not talking about just changing how we feel about the past here. I'm talking about actually changing it. Hi, my name is Layla and I'm a mindset and manifestation coach and I'm going to help you get what you want and live a life that is as fulfilling as possible. The past and the future are just aspects of our mind. We live in a mental universe where all is mind. Our minds are these computers that project the reality around us. Our consciousness is creating and giving life to this hologram. If we understand that consciousness produces matter and that our consciousness impacts our future, as I'm sure most of you watching this video have had experiences of your thoughts creating new events, circumstances that happen in your future, it also then seems coherent that your consciousness is creating your past because your past only exists in your consciousness. If something happens that you don't like, let's say you get fired, you get broken up with, you lose something important to you, you do something embarrassing, you actually don't have to accept this. You can actually wipe it out, revise it, rewrite the past, and then this will be reflected to you in your present, and your subconscious will create evidence of this new memory that you've made in the present. It's like a ripple, or the butterfly effect. I personally believe this is what retrocausality in quantum physics is about, but the science is still catching up with being able to find evidence for this. Excuse the building noises, every time I start filming they begin, it's whatever. I've revised losing things that I've seen with my own two eyes are lost beyond the potential of me getting them back, like fucking in a river flowing away from me, to them miraculously turning up in my bedroom again. I've revised losing uh, my, my iPhone dying with 60,000 unbacked up pictures and Apple telling me it's fucked, I need to get a new phone, to then a few hours later it miraculously restarting. I've revised health diagnoses, which I simply did not want to accept, sorry, not in my reality. Something that on paper looked really alarming, to then the doctor's opinion being, oh, that's totally fine, that's not a big deal the next day. I've revised fights with people to where it's like they have very little memory or almost no memory that we even fought and we just go back to being friends again. I've revised speeding tickets, the police's system glitches and it never gets registered, never gotten a single ticket. But no matter how many examples I give you, you're just going to have to try it yourself. This isn't magic, this is just a quantum mental universe. Nothing's impossible, but we're just getting started anyway. In the present moment, your consciousness can only deliver to you things that are coherent with your memories of the past. If you create a new memory, a new phenomenon that you focus your awareness on, when your subconscious mind accepts this as a fact, it will then be reflected in your present and it will produce evidence for you that this new memory actually happened. This is probably one of my favorite examples of revision. I'm not sure who this person is, so if this is your story, let me know so I can credit you because this is awesome. But this girl had always come from a poor family. They never had money growing up and she revised her childhood so that she came from old money. And she wrote out this whole story about how wealth was all she knew growing up and within a few weeks, this estranged uncle reached out to the family, whom she had never heard of, and he tried to get back on good terms with the family by giving them all hundreds of thousands of dollars, because in the meantime, he had become a multimillionaire. So this is just one example of how reality in the future filters in to conform to this new story you've written about the past. So, how do I revise? If it's urgent, I revise on the spot. But if it's something that happened a little while ago, if you want to go a bit deeper into it, you can script, you can visualize. So this is how I revision script. And I do this I do this pretty much every day. I revise every single day. But uh, we're going to talk about it for like a specific event. So let's say you got fired. You're going to start by writing down your original memory, how it actually happened. And then you don't have to go into detail. You can just outline it 
you don't have to do this, but it's just a nice little symbolic touch. You cross it out or you can throw the paper away. It's not necessary, but it's a good metaphorical suggestion to your subconscious. And then you're going to rewrite it how you actually wanted it to go. Your new memory. Be as detailed as you possibly want to or can. And you're going to reread this often. As often as possible, but at least twice a day when you wake up and when you're falling asleep. When the old story comes up, revert straight back to your new memory. You're going to do this until eventually you're sort of lulled into, it's almost like you're reading a storybook. You don't even have to believe it's real at first, but after a while the old story is going to lose its effect on you. It's going to lose its sense of urgency and disaster. And the new one's going to seem a lot more appealing. You want to do this until you basically don't even think of the old story anymore, the old memory. Because it's just not worth the time to think about, because you have this new, much more favorable memory and you feel so comfortable with it. And that's when things will shift. Let's say you get fired from your job. You could get called up a week or two later after you revise it. Being offered a new position they've just opened up, which pays even more and is even better for you. But you don't have to know how it's going to happen. You don't have to predict it or plan it. Things will unfold via the path of least resistance. Your, the, the infinite intelligence of your subconscious mind knows the best way to make this happen. To confirm to you this new memory that you've created. The first person who proposed this technique, as far as I know, is Neville Goddard. And I'm going to actually link a YouTube video to his audiobook where he talks about revision because he explains it much more profoundly and beautifully than I can right now. And he gives a lot of examples of people who have utilized this technique, which will really aid in your understanding of this. So I highly recommend listening to that audiobook. As I've explained in a previous video, your self-concept, everything that your consciousness accepts as being, is largely responsible for the play of your life. But who you identify as today is largely made up of things that happened in the past. But we don't have to accept that. I am here to encourage ultimate liberation, and that includes liberation from the past. You can revise things from the recent past, things that happened five minutes ago or two weeks ago, or from the very distant past. I would say that revising childhood memories produces the most powerful effects, because the childhood, so the original implicit memory, is how we form the reference for everything that we experience today as adults. To me, it's quite unfortunate that so many people get stuck in this toxic loop of healing with various therapists over the years, where all they do is sit and rehash the past, re-entering those negative traumatic memories and staying stuck there, creating these loops which keep perpetuating into the future and recreating them as that person day after day. Now, I'm not saying therapy isn't beneficial. You should absolutely seek it if, if you need it, and it can be very beneficial. But after the emotions and the traumas have been processed, revision is really helpful because it's like a blank slate. You can leave behind that past and that identity that doesn't serve you anymore and create one exactly as you'd like it. You can decide that you had a healthy, loving, resourceful, abundant childhood, that you come from a long line of people who carry the values that you wish to identify with. Psychology shows that unconsciously, we try to stay in alignment with our tribes, so our parents, our family, or the environment we grew up with for survival. And this often doesn't end up serving us in the long run, because there may be things that we desire to identify with, but they don't align with the awareness of the tribe that we've had. I've done this personally. Um, I spent a couple years in therapy to work through some childhood things, and I never got anywhere. It was just like sitting on the fucking couch, recounting the same things with multiple different therapists. Like I could have just given them a sheet just to summarize everything that I know they're going to conclude. I personally found a lot more benefit when I simply revised my childhood. I was able to let go of a lot of resentment and move forward like I was freed. I was freed from these weights holding me down. It's kind of like within boxing. When we punch, we don't aim for the target. We aim for beyond the target so that our punch is even stronger. And revising your childhood is like, you're moving on to more stable ground. So not only are you aiming for beyond your target, you're a lot stronger with your punch because you're standing on more stable ground now. When you revise events from the past, and you feed that new information to your subconscious. You don't have to believe it, but
but you keep feeding that information into your subconscious through repetition, your subconscious has no choice but to produce evidence of that for you. Your subconscious doesn't have an opinion, and it can't say yes or no, it can't reject something that you're feeding into it. Whatever you feed into it, it will reproduce for you. So if you revise, let's say, a fight with someone, and you write it down the way that you would have liked it to happen, and you keep rereading this, they're gonna, f they're gonna act like it never happened. They're gonna have very little recollection of it. You can, I've revised the craze, like, I use this mostly when I'm in very dangerous or alarming situations. When, when something really awful happens, I immediately start revising on the spot in my head. I start replaying the scene as I would have wanted it to go. And really, really unbelievable things happen. There was a point where I was, I absolutely should have lost the job I had because of something that happened. And the next day I walked in and it was resolved. I was given a, a, a hug. I know a lot of people who have done this with injuries and they have miraculous recoveries overnight. I've revised getting sick, you know, the signs of a cold. Nope, not gonna happen. Next day I'm fine. I've revised fights and breakups to the point where <laughs> I'll meet the person again. And it didn't even register in their mind that we're broken up. And they're still telling people that we're together. Because we are, because that's what I revised. I really want people to get this and to try this because it's so powerful. We don't ever have to go to bed sad. I mean, think about it. What a crime. To go to bed in a bad mood, sad, depressed, angry, hurt. What are you doing? We know what happens. You enter the hypnagogic state where, you know, you're in theta brainwaves as you're falling asleep and your subconscious is highly impressionable and you're replaying scenes that you don't want happening again that make you sad, but you're replaying them and you're making yourself sad and your subconscious is just witnessing all of this and taking directions as it has to because that's what it does. And then what does it do for you? It recreates more evidence of that being your life, that being your reality. Instead, you don't ever have to go to bed sad again. You can rewrite every day as you would have wanted it to go. And this is what I try to do. I try to rewrite in my diary every single day how I would have liked it to go. And I try to stay close to the, the factual events, but I also integrate elements of everything that I'm manifesting for my dream life. And I drift to sleep enveloped in that beautiful, warm, loving energy of that reality that I'm creating for myself. So my subconscious accepts that as true, and that's what I'm seeing evidence for more and more every day. So just try this out. Next time you're in a bind, next time something you really don't want happens, try revising it, even if it's just in your head. Play it out as it went, and then rewind and play it out as you would have wanted it to go. And just remember that memory for a few minutes or hours or days and see what happens. And uh, I know that most people are applying this in a romantic perspective, because that's when we're really the most motivated to get results, is when our heart is endangered. And I would really suggest this. If your romantic person is saying something you don't like, you don't have to you don't have to fight with them, you don't have to try to change their mind, but in your head, you're witnessing the version of them that you would like to see, saying what you would like to hear, and then you're calm. This is why this isn't really manipulation, because you're not manipulating anything in the 3D. You're simply giving awareness and perception to a story in your mind, which will then be reflected outwardly because you understand that your mind is reflecting things outwardly 100% of the time, whether you're aware of it or not. So you may as well take responsibility for that and stop creating shit you don't like to then be unsatisfied and grumpy about. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and I'll try to explain this in more detail if that will help. I also do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. If there is a particular desire you want to help attaining, I got you. Thank you for watching. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, turn that bell button on. It's still, it's still funny for me to be saying these words. But yeah, um, turn that bell button on so you don't miss when I post. I will be posting many times a month because I got a lot to say. <laughs> Thanks. Bye.